Hi there, Christian Hudson from Spitfire Audio here. Massively proud to be showcasing London Contemporary Orchestra Strings. Um, this is a game changer of a library for me because it enables me to really write ultra modern. Do I use the word cool? Probably not because I hate the word cool, but they are really cool. Um, strings, really zeitgeisty stuff whilst keeping it in the box and really writing my music. It's not like a kind of aleatoric thing where you go, oh, this is kind of cheeky phrase. I write my, my music with it, but it has the London Contemporary Orchestra edge. Um, so it's absolutely fantastic. Today, I'm going to be doing a really schlocky bit of hybrid music, uh, combining the LCO stuff, which is recorded on our dry stage in King's Cross, with the Massa, largely the Massa stuff, which is a symphonic string band recorded in the hall and double tracked and all sorts of cheeky stuff. So I'm showing you two extremes of the spectrum, a really dry and a really wet, and showing you how I can combine those. So LCO, it's a standalone library. You could write an entire film score with it, but it's also an amazing enhancement uh, to your arsenal. And I think by hearing this, you know, I'm, I very much doubt that it's not going to find its way onto most of my arrangements because it adds a an amazing Jerry Goldsmith style class to it. OK, so let's run this down so you can have a listen to uh, what we're going to be looking at. If you want to get straight to the meat and taters, just roll forward four minutes. The arrangement is exactly four minutes. Um, uh, credit is also due to Charlie Klauser, who did an amazing uh, masterclass. Charlie Klauser from the Nine Inch Nails and uh, of the Saw franchise. And uh, he did this amazing masterclass at NAMM where he did this kind of relentless pulsing stuff. So, Charlie, if you're watching, I am copying you. But I just wanted to try and get inside what you did um, using those techniques of pitch shifting and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, apologies in advance, Charlie, if you're watching. Here we go.
Okay, so um, that's quite noisy. Um, I think the, the most kind of explicit example of uh, the, what the LCO can add is if we just listen to what Massa is doing. I'm just using basically the cool strings, which are admittedly beautiful sounding, if I say so myself. Um, so if we just have a listen to those, and then we'll just see what LCO can add to the mix. So drone, lots of controller data, modulation and expression. Beautiful, perfectly acceptable. And in fact, that would have been acceptable for me uh, as a jobbing composer. Now, if we add in LCO, you'll hear at the bottom end, we get this amazing open string sound. And at the top, interest. So what I'm using is the Saltasto and a bit of the Open Normal. And what, what's lovely about that is when it crosses into the cello arena a little bit further down, just here, you hear this wonderful open string. So let's just run that a little bit. Now, it's recorded on a dry stage, so uh, how am I getting the two to mix? Well, you'll see that uh, pretty much everything is bussed to uh, bus one here, and uh, that is what I'm using today. I pur purposely didn't use a posh verb, is my lexicon random haul, and I've actually reduced the preset down to two seconds. I think it's usually about four, which is a bit excessive with an arrangement like this. And you'll just see, if you compare the two, that the massa is just a touch as a kind of blending device and the LCO I've used a, a, a whole bunch so let's just have a listen to it without I mean beautifully recorded by uh, Joe Rubel produced by Stanley Gabriel and when I recorded it I literally just put them both into record and recorded at the same time I mean, that's not to say they're not purposefully mixed, so you can see the massa is boosted, and so I've I've blended the two, but I'm not actually riding it. Um, you know, the, the 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 mix of the two, I get a, a balance that I'm happy with, and then I just work with the two. Excellent. Next up is the drone. I automate that in, and it takes an age to come in. So let's just move to the next bit, and uh, let's have a listen to that which is a processed sound, so let's just kill that. Let's have a listen to the original. I mean, awesome, awesome sound. And then you'll probably see with this arrangement, I tend to probably overuse Apple Pitch, which is, if you don't know where it is, you Mac users, you've got to get your hands on this stuff. It's just absolutely awesome. It's a really, uh, you know, it's a hands-on, very musical uh, pitch shifter. So what I've done here is it's actually just blended 52%. So if I turn it full up, as I've just basically gone down the octave and I've made it nice and smooth. And then... One of my approaches is instead of piling loads of EQ on stuff, is if, if, if I'm not entirely happy with the character of the sound, I change the character of the sound as opposed to just try and engineer it out. Um, and but having said that, I've also boosted the bejesus out of the bottom end that we've just added. And again, a liberal sprinkling of uh, reverb there. So what else have we got for this bit? OK, the cool thing that I love about the LCO string library are these plucks. And in fact, later on, I make a real feature of them.
gone a step further with um, some offbeats. Let me just take off the junk. And so we've got this uh, part here. <laughs> to really differentiate that uh, so I added some stereo delays to make it bigger and uh, again it wasn't cutting through so I added an octave and I blended it in just 34% so you can hear that's it. let's let's do it without so no EQ just just an, an added, added octave and again, because I didn't want it to be in the melange, actually in the centre, I wanted to, you to really feel it. Uh, what I've done is I've set this kind of auto pan, and I think uh, the tremolo plugins were great for that. So that's on quarters. So let's have a listen to that together. <laughs> Joining the plucks uh, is our mandolin swarm, which is about 20 mandolin players playing in the hall. And again, a whole bunch of junk on that. So let's have a listen to Dry. Mixture of the close, and we had two trees because the ensemble was so big and up in the galleries, you get a real sense of scale with the two trees. And then what I did, again, inspired by Charlie's masterclass, I just wanted to try, I know Charlie does this with pitch bend, but um, I just used the AU plugin and just going up to about 34 um, cents up. So not even half a semitone. So that's just automated with the AU pitch. So that's at 100%. And I've set these so it sounds as musical as possible. And again, I wanted to get it out of the central field, but obviously because it's 20 odd uh, mandolins, I didn't want to chop it down to mono and pan it. So I used the spreader, which is cheesy plugin, which just gets it into right into left and right. Make it big with this delay. I boosted the uh, EQ. I just use this as a gainer. Uh, often use that if I'm just, uh, it's automated. I've got some uh volume data in there and stuff and just it's, got, it's just a quick way for me of just boosting it and then i just wanted to top off, chop off the front end and what i tend to do for that again it's, it's not instead of going into the adsr i just put a bit of distortion on and it takes off the the, the very front so it makes it softer and then joining in is my trusty uh, trumpet fiddle, which is a, a, a contrap single stringed instrument with, made with a gramophone horn that was popular for about six months in the 1910s, um, arguably because it sounded so awful. Um, so let's just have a listen to that automated in. So this is a loop. And what I like about this, bringing it in later, just gives real definition to these plucks. In addition to that, I've also got um, Massa Colenos for the scale and some spiccatos. Okay, so LCO on their own and Massa. LCO really adds a front end uh, to that. Uh, what else? Before we get on to our the boring strings, I've got this beautiful high drone, which is harmonics played on the basses and the cellos with the LCO. Great, all sorts of fundamentals there. Uh, later on, we... Uh, use the massa spiccatos to more dramatic effect so let's have a listen to that which you know bog standard you'd imagine and then i've added the logic distortion which doesn't sound like distortion to me it's uh, it it does something but i actually quite like it uh, so let's have a listen to that naughty boys brilliant and then we uh, also got the tutti brass patch brass and strings patch 
which again is ridiculous and I added some distortion and not happy with that I added a an octave below so let's just have a listen to with the distortion and then because I'm a slag I wanted more and because that wasn't really speaking to me I added massive amounts of sub bass ridiculous and because as I said total slag uh, put more more bass on it and then I thought hang on that almost sounds like a distant Tyco so later on um, I just chopped all of the top end off and hey presto who would have thought that's a bunch of trumpets brilliant and then we're back to our massa cool and then a new blend of circular scrubs and uh, long saltasto so let's just have a quick listen to those in isolation lots of extraordinary movement there this i just have to caveat this this is actually a beater so there is some tuning hoo-hoo's, but i don't know it's what gives it, it the edge for me so when when we switch to the actual release version i'm not sure if i'm going to swap over because i i like things to be out of tune sometimes and then we've got the open normal which i automate in uh, to give a little bit more definition and then we've got the violas coming in as well so that's about it uh, for that section uh, then we've got some percussion that comes in again uh, usually I'd rely on uh, something like this from Albion One's Darwin just because I'm conditioned to do that and Charlie Klauser on his demo at um, NAMM just used his kind of favorite 909 um, and I, I only have one kick drum and I kind of was embarrassed about it until a very good friend, the producer Pascal Gabriel, um, said, admitted to me he only uses one kick as well, um, which made me feel a lot better about it. So this is my little top pocket kick, which is a lot of front end, but also it's great for bass. And uh, then I wanted a kind of sucking sensation. So I laid that, I recorded one of those kicks into uh, Logic and then I just reversed it. And again, because of the bassiness of all of these tracks that we're putting together, I wanted to get it out of the center and to the sides. So um, I used tremolando, um, but going incredibly like between left and right. It gives it a modulated quality as well. And then I took a bit of the top end, there was a bit, bit of kind of crackle there, took that off, and then a bit of distortion. It's kind of just to give it a bit of, give it a bit of a bit of presence, really, more than anything. Okay, uh, and then we've got some uh, later on. We've got some Hans Zimmer rolls, and what I purposely did is I didn't um, layer the 909 style kick drum and the Darwin percussion. They alternate, um, so later on they are actually layered, just to. Um, kind of subconsciously give uh, an intensification of the arrangement uh, and we also have these amazing uh, roles from the hands of a percussion library okay so next bit we settle back down to um, our strings and what i've done is the lco mix that we used before for the bass and then ligeti uh, uh, strings from massa which are really weirdly arranged selection of baked uh, uh, strings that change with the region um, and then our normal massa cool our second set of of uh, the LCO and then I've also added the LCO harmonics and I've put them up an octave as they should be and then I've also uh, put that drone back in. So just let's have a, just a quick listen without the harmonics, maybe just this bit here. So you can really hear that I've really 
dug out that um, amazing open string sound. So if you just hear Massa on its own. LCO with it. Absolutely awesome. And then if we just bring in the uh, high harmonics. So it adds a slightly more emphatic feel to it. It's like, without it being, oh. And uh, I've also got the normals coming in there, just a bit of the kind of straight but also I think a real enhancement is this high uh, drone which the artifacts mix with the harmonics of the um, strings to really create something quite magical and that bit where I mentioned I was a slag earlier well I also employed my trusty EXS best sampler ever made ever ever um, but it's also brilliant because when you don't load anything in it comes up with the baddest sine wave um, which I've set to a long attack and I've basically used exactly the same uh, uh, region data as the other strings and I've just balanced the two so let's hear that with that that dug out bit it's just awesome Okay, now let's hear it with. <laughs> I love it. Mummy, I made a mistake in my underpants. Okay, um, so we pretty much go back to the arrangement as is, but as I say, uh, I up the um, intensity there, and um, that's really about it. And then we just end off on that um, high drone again with our our trumpets who would have thought okay so let's now we've uh, we're learned on how this has been built uh, let's run that down
Thanks ever so much for listening. See you next time.